Hi guys, this is a Samoa Noir or uh, Roffe. Um, today's video is going to be a little bit different and it might not be entirely happy or cheery. Instead it's gonna be a confession of some sort but it's something that I have had on my shoulder my whole life and uh, I simply felt I needed to get it out somehow I don't know as most of you know I have severe panic anxiety I have trouble walking alone on the c in the city or going by bus something like that stuff like that i also have a sleeping disorder which makes me wake up i think it's called hypnagogic jerk or something well it's very very uh, it's very uh, tough <laughs> uh, i also have a uh, death anxiety I'm terrified of dying and uh, I need to get this off my chest I to understand why I feel the way I do we have to go back a little bit in time yeah, to 1972 when I was born in Stockholm Sweden my mom worked at a uh, shipping company or something like that you know I can't remember what it's called now and uh, she lived a couple of blocks away from my grandparents so I basically was with my grandparents since I was a couple of months old my mom also was very young when she got me and uh, mic works uh, she was parting pretty hard and uh, my grandmother was a very what should we say firm woman she knew what she wanted and if she didn't get what she wants she threatened <laughs> so I grew up with her and my grandpa my grandpa was a nice guy really but he kind of like was in the distance a lot felt like it he didn't really connect anyway my mom met another guy I won't tell any names of course uh, and uh, for the sake of it let's say it's someone else so this guy's mom met another guy who wasn't at, at least he wasn't really nice he was a real ass and they decided to move out to the to the grandparents family home on the islands where they had grown up since generations back at first everything worked out okay-ish until the grandparents and the mother's new guy started to basically jump each other's throats and the guy the mother's guy hit the little kid not many times but uh, and he also hit the kid's mom who am I fucking with of course it's me and my mom so he hit my mom and one day my grandma got enough so he kind of jumped him and he hit her with a you know the one you have when you are uh, riding when you are skiing and he hit her and he hit my grandpa and the cops were involved and after that they decided to build a house a bit from the house where my grandparents lived and what happened then was that I grew up with my grandpa and grandma, grandma and grandpa, and uh, 
my grandmother had some kind of mental disease illness which made her overly protective I would say I don't know she I don't think she meant any harm at all but it became almost evil what she did when I started to meet friends she panicked and she said she threatened me and said that she would become she would die <laughs> when I was away and the, st the standard phrase she used was well let's see if I'm still here when you come back and sometimes she, she even used that when I was going to school which and together with the people the other kids I was new in school and they kind of like didn't take well to outlanders made it a hell um, so I started to act sick in the mornings and said that I had a headache which my grandmother cured by giving me aspirin every morning <laughs> so I'm basically still kind of hooked on aspirin they aren't called aspirin in Sweden they are called uh, trio but they have uh, the same kind of basic ingredients um, uh, this sounds like something out of a horror story uh, uh, and I love my grandmother I really did somehow but she also when I started to meet girls all of them were kind of like bad they were whores and they were dirty and well you know the basic Norman Bates shit <laughs> uh, and one time I remember when I come, got home from school she actually played dead on the floor just to give me shock this is what could happen if you don't do what I say <coughs> I'm so sorry um, and this, this is no fantasy this is the truth I just feel like I need to get it out of my chest after all these years and I can't talk to a relative because I don't know they are kind of they have also seen all of this my sisters have seen it you know my mother is still alive and I love my mother with all my soul but she has a problem with medicines sometimes she just freaks out on medicines not freak out in the way that she goes on a rampage or anything but uh, she just lies in beds and feeling sorry for herself and is pretty mean to, uh, to, to us others um, anyway when I would be turned 17 and 18 my grandmother got stomach cancer and all of the horrors that she had threatened with me with basically came true. So she moved from the island into her apartment in the city and went to chemotherapy and shit like that. And for once I felt free. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I felt free. I drank, I did drugs, I fucked around. I. I was free, I was free to do what I wanted. And then we heard that the cancer was cured and she would return. And I kind of panicked. I tried to I tried to do the the the, the cellar outside to a living room and unfortunately the cancer came back more aggressive than it was before and she passed away. I freaked out. I drank even harder, went into fights, did drugs, and I'm not talking about cannabis, I talk about other drugs. I guess I, for one time in my life, I didn't know what to do. I guess I wanted to die too, perhaps some. Um, well, I inherited a house which I sold to my mom and I moved from the island because I had enough. I met a girl and we tried to move up north and we moved, stayed there for a year perhaps, but then I got bored and went back to Sweden. Yes, yeah, Sweden, <laughs> to, to, to the south. Uh, <coughs> and when I sold the house to my mother, it was under one special deal. 
that I would always be welcome back and build a house on the premises, which I now have. So that's about the story I wanted to tell you. Uh, but when I was in my early 18th, 17, 18th, I started to get panic attacks. I started to feel sick. I started to don't want to go places if I wasn't drunk. I could lie on bed and feel like I had a heart attack. And uh, I have been trying ever since to medicate it with uh, all kind of pills. It doesn't work really. I still can move around when I'm drunk or shit, but uh, if I'm alone and gotta go somewhere into town or something, it's a li living nightmare. And I always have these at panic attacks and thoughts about dying. <laughs> I, I remember uh, I had a shrink, which by the way doesn't do anything for me. Uh, he asked me, shit I lost track. He asked me, uh, why are you afraid of dying? And the simple question I had was, the answer I had was, think that you're in a room with three doors and you don't know what's behind them. Behind one door it's everything that you ever wanted or ever needed. Behind door two there's emptiness, just a void, you don't exist. And behind number one you're alone naked, freezing degrees, and wet on an endless ice forever. Shouldn't you be a little bit afraid to open one of these doors? He just looked at me. <laughs> uh, there's so much I could tell you about. But I guess if there's something, if there's something to learn from this, is that if you have kids, or if you're going to get kids, think about it. Because it is a responsibility that you have to live with until the kid is old enough to take care of himself. You cannot dump that burden onto someone else. It's yours and your responsibility alone. I don't know. I don't know, man. I might have been crazy even if I grew up in a family full of love and care and perhaps there's something wrong in here, you know, that makes me the way I am. But somehow I don't think that's the case. I don't think no one is born sick or at least not mentally sick. I think it comes from the environment and from what people do to you when you are still forming, you know. I have to live with my illness for the rest of my life. Unless I, <laughs> if I'm not chosen to do a lobotomy or something. Because people don't really know how it is. They kind of see this cheerful, happy guy who laughs, goes to the bar. And yes, I can go to the bar because when I get to the bar I get drunk. And then it's like nerve pills, you know. I live on the island. I can all go to the to the local store because I drive my own motorcycle. I don't have to take a tub or take a bus or anything like that. And the people at the local store are people I have known for my eternal in, in, for my life, my whole life. So of course it isn't as bad as when I go to a big, let's say Walmart in Stockholm. I don't think we have Walmart, but we have kind of like similar stores and I'm sorry my brother-in-law is outside driving around on a four-wheel I just needed to get this off my chest I I hope I don't bore you to death and I don't do this to make people feel sorry for me I do this because I want to explain why I am the way I am and I want to perhaps give give a tip to other parents 
becoming parents that please take your responsibility don't dump it over to someone else because it can turn ugly with that said i wish you the best week and the best best everything that you can ever have i love you guys and i will see you in the next video